Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to episode 130 of the Business Bootcamp podcast. Today's exciting, 130 episodes, can't believe it. Today we're going to be going over partnerships, and we're going to be talking about the one ingredient that every single entrepreneur needs to figure out in order to be successful. So, let's get started. It comes from a question that came in on email, and remember, you can go to businessbootcamppodcast.com and fill out, actually it didn't come via email, it came in an application, uh, look at it here. Um, you can fill out the application and submit your question on how to start, grow, or save your business. Or you can email me at businessbootcamppodcast at gmail.com. Now, today's episode is sponsored, I should say, by landscapebusinesscourse.com. That is the course that I run on how to start your landscaping business and scale it up to $100,000 per month in revenue. Check it out, landscapebusinesscourse.com. And we have also have a free landscape business course um, a web a podcast, sorry, as well as the webinar, but um, also the podcast is now available, and we're doing some new stuff on that. So check it out, Landscape Business Course. Now, today is a special day for me. Before we get into the content and the question coming from Tom, uh, today was a special day for me because every single year I try to take one day out of December and spend it primarily on goal setting and planning for the next calendar year. So today was, what, December 3rd? And I went out to a little store, health store, and got a really green smoothie because I'm into that stuff. And uh, started planning all my business stuff for next year. And it's only for my business stuff. I don't plan life goals on, in December, that sort of thing. Uh, I do that on my daily ones. Uh, and I do business goals on, on a daily basis, and I have them posted up on my wall over there. Uh, but as far as next year, I, what I do is I take every, all my businesses. So I have not like, like, so I have only like three entities that I work under at the different LLCs and stuff. But, uh, as far as the ventures, there's several that are grouped into like, for instance, Mike Andy's, uh, Enterprises LLC and Andy's Enterprises LLC and stuff like that. So like, um, underneath those entities, I have several uh, ventures, I guess you'd say. And so today what I do is I take every single one of those ventures and I put in the, the numbers of what I want to be hitting in 2017 or like the next calendar year. So today was really fun. It's always a day that I, I, I come off like this entrepreneurial high, this inspirational, super excited to, you know, go forward and get, uh, get, uh, get going on the next year. And so it, it, it's a lot of fun and it kind of gets me, going because the next couple months are pretty slow with landscaping and stuff so it keeps me hyped up and ready for action come next year so that's always exciting um all i always come back and i have some great ideas like if you like for instance on landscape business course podcast today i posted uh, a long form of what this page and all these other pages uh have with numbers of what we want to do for our landscaping uh business i'm not going to go into detail on it today on this uh, on this uh, show, but then I also have this little book here, a uh, notebook. So it says some people dream for success while others wake up and work hard at it. Inside this book, I do uh, two pages on every single business, and I put the exact monthly revenues of each, exactly what we need to do in every single month strategically to uh, accomplish those goals. So whether that be like buy certain types of equipment or have certain partnerships or uh, have certain, uh, 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 which we'll call it, sponsors on the, on the, sh on the shows. So that's really exciting. And uh, if, you do, if you are interested in how I break down my, my goals for each business, I broke it down for the landscaping por portion over on Landscape Business Course podcast. That's completely free to listen to. It's like 20 minutes long. And I go into how we're building our, we're going to be building our second shop in 2017. So that's kind of a big deal. It's in a much, much busier area. And so the market is going to be a lot bigger for where we can expand and grow into. And I think it's really uh, the first step for our company to really scale big time. And so I'm looking forward to it a lot. Uh, I have to save a lot of money. If you listen to that podcast, you'll see how much we need to kind of save and set aside in 2017 so we can build it. And uh, it, it's exciting. Like uh, it's it's just part of being an entrepreneur. Some people aren't shouldn't do it really like w there's a lot of risk there is i i look at this plan sometimes at in december and i just and i just look at sleepless nights and a lot of stress and i don't i when pe when i'm stressed usually only a few people can re recognize it like my parents can and like my office manager 
you're probably li listening to this, like they can figure out when I'm kind of stressed out. Usually I hide it pretty good from other employees and um, just my friends, family, and things like that. Uh, as far as when I'm stressed out, I don't usually show it too much. I don't have like nervous breakdowns or anything like that. I try to stay uh, healthy and I'm thankful for that, that I don't have problems as far as that con is concerned. So. Um, yeah, I look at some of these plans and goals and I see what we need to do to get them accomplished and I know there's a lot of work to be done. And so, for instance, on this one here, this is a kind of a site drawing of what we're going to be doing for Shop 2.0, which we'll be building next year in our new location and buying the property and everything. And then I broke down in that podcast episode, like, all the different build-out costs and how we need a certain amount of cash and all of that. So, it's exciting and I think it's... I, I'm not telling everyone that they have to do it. I think you should find your own form and fashion of goal setting. For me, daily is uh, life goals and business goals long term, and just it's really about a for, uh, about writing them out and just creating, just ingraining them in my mind. Uh, and so, but then December is really where I get super, super in depth about what we do, and I plan every little detail down to like the dollar of monthly revenues and what we need to do to get there and so it's exciting it's a lot of fun a lot of fun and so like so a lot of times when people talk about goals like this is not all unscripted sorry we're we are going to get into the content about partnerships and i'm going to answer your question tom but a lot of times people uh when we talk about goals they they, they bring up this law of attraction thing and it was funny because this morning i was in a meeting uh and we i brought this up and then i I was like, man, that was good. I kind of made it up on the fly, and then I, I shared it with my office manager via text because I was like super cool, and I was like, man, this is this actually makes sense. Like, it was it was, it was good, and uh, so I'll share it with you guys. And so like we were talking about what, what I was thinking about was like law of attraction. We talk about goal setting and all of that. And so what the law of attraction is basically is good things happen when you are. Uh, you know, good things are attracted to good thoughts essentially so like if you're always thinking about being successful and what you can do to be uh, successful in your business and things like typically the law of attraction would say that those things are then attracted to you and if you're always thinking of failure you're gonna end up failing those things are just attracted to you so what I said as we were in this meeting I was it was just on the fly I was like the only the only part of the law of attraction that is true is the last six letters a C T I O N, which spells action, and what that means is like, yes, the law of attraction, whatever I, 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 whatever, like there, okay. But I think I really feel like when people put in action, they put in like hard work and they put in the grind. That's what the law of it. That's what is it. That's when success is attracted to an individual is when they put in the action. When they get out and they're willing to put out the 120, 120 hours a week and they're willing to spend the late nights, all nights, and they're willing to risk and they're willing to put things on the line, uh, that's when I think good things are attracted to them. And so I, I don't, I don't know, like I get the law of attraction, I get it's, it's uh, people who say yay and nay against it and for it and everything like that. I just would rather believe that my action, because it's something I can actually... Um, I can physically do, it's something that I can take control of, is the, my action, my level of action, and that's why in my little notebook here, it says about how some people dream of success, while others wake up and work hard at it. So you can dream all you want and think about good thoughts all day and how good you're going to be, but unless you get out there and start working hard, it's not going to happen. And if it does, it's luck. And I would just happen to say that good things, like, I, the, the harder I work, the luckier I get heard that before you probably heard it from other people the harder I work the luckier I get and I just, I'd rather just stick with that so um anyways back to our regular program here uh so I got a question in from Tom he wrote in from the podcast on, on the website businessbootcamppodcast.com and I'm gonna read it to you it just takes me two two minutes or so it's we're gonna talk about partnerships and stuff and just kind of dive into that all right here we go Tom wrote in he says Hey Mike, I've been listening to your podcast for a while now and it prompted me to start my own business. The business idea revolves around making performance performance parts like intakes and exhausts for a car that doesn't have much of an aftermarket part supply. My partner and I, my partner and I intend to fabricate the car parts from stainless steel and aluminum and weld them together. 
We also have a location at my dad's shop, so rent is not an issue. The issue that I have is that my partner has no experience with welding or fabricating, whereas doing these things is my current full-time job. He has been trying to push towards the cheapest equipment and the cheapest material. He does, however, know more about the car parts than I do. I'm worried that without a higher standard of quality, our products will eventually fail. We have asked on forums if there was any interest for these aftermarket parts for this specific car, and we were met with the overall yes. This was asked on the only forum for this car. How can we extend our reach when asking about the interest in a product? My partner wants to begin production right now, but I feel we haven't had a large enough response to warrant it. What do you think, Mike? Thank you. That's from Tom. All right, so first of all, yes, you should validate an idea, but why not just make them and try selling them? Uh, especially, like, I would validate ideas more if it required a lot of capital and risk. But if you already have rent, like your dad just giving you free rent, and all you're paying for is the cost of materials and some of your time, like why not make them and start selling them? You know, go into the forums and see what sells. Because you don't have, like, your barrier to entry is so low, why not just go out and try? And, uh, like, I get it. Like, for instance, this shop 2.0 that we're trying to make, like, it's going to risk hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I should probably validate that idea, and we have, with shop 1.0, essentially our first shop. And so... I feel a lot more confident putting the money in, obviously, and risking that. However, for you, there is no barrier to entry. There is no huge cost involved. So why not make the parts, even if you don't brand it and have a website and incorporate and stuff, why not just make the parts, see if they sell, whether it be eBay or whatever you use, go to those forums and say, hey, if you're interested, here it is. Buy it here at this link, and it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. So I would go out and do it. And I think anyone else out there that has an idea and they, they, you know, the paralysis by analysis start thinking too hard, the thing is they need to realize is that if the idea is low barrier to entry, like if you're trying to create a massive app and like you're wanting to create the next Facebook, yeah, there's barriers, barriers to entry. You're going to have to raise lots of money. There's huge amounts of risk. You're going to have to employ people. It's going to be really big, right? Uh, but why not just go out and do it if you have low barrier to entry type of environment. For instance, lawn care landscaping. Like, anyone can go do it. Um, so why not just go and start? I think starting is such a huge hurdle that people... I bet I bet the, the most successful businesses, the most successful brands have never been created that could have been the biggest thing. It could have been the, 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 the next Apple, like the next Tesla, the next Google. They were... They stopped in the mind of of an entrepreneur or in the mind of somebody and they never came to fruition and obviously the next Google and Facebook and whatever like it's hard that's barriers to entry there but for something like this like just if you have an idea and there's low barriers to entry you're not gonna be risking your life savings and massive amounts of time and energy just go out and do it just go out and try go out and sell you might hit something you might hit something you know so Tom, I would suggest going out and doing that. As far as partnerships, when it comes to a partnership, it's very, it's, it's, uh, I would never join, be involved in a big partnership unless it made a lot of sense. For instance, I've only ever been involved in one pro partnership and um, it worked out really good, still working good. Uh, but like the key to par a key, successful partnership is you got to give and take. So when your guys are dis disagreeing about, what t what quality of parts you should be making. I'm not going to tell you you should make high quality and charge premium prices. Uh, I'm not going to tell you go low quality and go mass market. Like, I'm not going to go either one of those directions. What I'm going to tell you is as a partnership, you can do both. And if you can't do both, because sometimes there, there are industries where, and other stuff like products and stuff, you can't go both ways. And if you think it's going to hurt your brand and things by diverging on price and quality. But if you can't, what you need to do is realize you're in a partnership and not just give in. What you need to do is come to agreement as a partnership together that, hey, like, we aren't personally invested in this as far as feelings and all that. Like, we want the business to succeed. And if you guys can agree on that, then you move to step two, which is how are we going to validate these products? And so if, they, if one person thinks it should be high quality and another person thinks it should be low quality, do a test. 
Like, Tom, if you validate the idea that these are going to sell, but then you guys are still disagreeing on which uh, level of quality and price and all of that to go after what type of market, make a some of both and then just have an agreement to, hey, we want the business to succeed. We're not invested in us being right um, personally and being uh, uh, better than the our other partner. Like, if you guys can got to get over that number one like that's really key and if you have a bad partnership that key that step is never taken um but if you can get that if you can realize that the, that, that your personal being right is less important than the business being successful if you can get over that then what you need to do is create like a small test run and say all right have this talk with your partner and say hey whichever one sells more whichever one creates the most profit whatever you want to phrase that after X amount of days, that's the one we're gonna stick with. And I do feel like in this particular case, Tom, you could do both and create a premium brand, a, a product line, and then a less premium product line, like for price and quality. However, like there are people out there in different industries where you gotta choose one or the other, and I get it. And that's what I would suggest doing, is if you have a partnership and you can't choose which direction to go yourself, just, you got to come to the agreement with a partnership that the business is more important than you being right or you making more money than your partner. However, like, like you, when you go into a partnership, you need to be really clear of the exit. That's important. Like, if the person wants to make a $100 million business and you're like, I just want to make a $10 million business to sell it for $20 million, but they want to make, like, compete with the next, the biggest player in your industry, that's important to note. Because when you hit $10 million in revenue and you're wanting to sell it, but they want to hold on to it, that's going to carry a lot of problems. So when you go into a partnership, everyone needs to be clear as to what the exit's going to be, how the business is going to be run, number two, and number three, what everyone's role and responsibility in the business is. Who's going to be responsible for answering customer complaints? And who's going to be responsible for sales? And I think, Tom, you have it pretty clearly defined that, hey, he's in charge of sales or like the business aspect and you're part of like you're the manufacturing aspect and production and I think you need to have that talk of clearly defining those roles so even if you only become a hundred thousand dollar business on the, on the side or whatever those are defined but if you become bigger than that that's when really partnerships really get tested as to whether their foundation was built correctly and when I say foundation it was are the roles and responsibilities clear to find was the exit strategy planned out in the beginning like all of those things are important and to do when you're getting into a partnership. Once you're in the partnership, you have to realize together that the business is so much more important than you being correct, and the business as a whole being historically correct is more important than a one-time short-term win. So if, you, if everyone can agree on that fact, that it's not personal interest, it's not being right in you, yourself, but you want the business to succeed, which usually partnership partners can agree on that, uh, if you can do that, I think, Tom, you should test the product, see which one sells, and have an agreement beforehand with your partner that, hey, let's take our personal opinion out of this and see what the market determines. That's what's so great about America, about capitalism, about all of that like business stuff in the market. Because the market determines whether you're successful. The market, your customers, will tell you if your, your business model is successful. And so you can talk whatever you want, but that's what's so great about business is when it comes down to it, it's 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 the market that's going to tell you whether you're a failure or whether you're good at what you do. Like, yeah, so that that's my spiel, because, and I was going to go into like people who t talk the talk but don't walk the walk and don't have a business that is actually viable and they just try to whatever. Anyways, I'm not going to go down that direction. So... That's, that's my two cents, I guess, on partnerships. What you need to do when you get into them, number one. And number two, when you have conflicts, you need to come to the agreement that the business is bigger than everyone's opinion and being right and all of that. And you need to decide, agree on a test. Agree, if, if that's what it comes down to. If you, if you can't work it out verbally, like that's what you gotta go to is a, is a test. And uh, so partnerships can be super successful to cover your weaknesses with someone that's very strong in those areas, but a, a partnership can also be lethal to the growth of a business when opportunities are presented but the partners don't agree on the method of accepting or rejecting those opportunities. So that's deep. So we talked a lot about a lot about today. Talked about goals. Talked about the law of attraction and what I think about it as far as action being the key. 
we talked about partnerships, we talked about all sorts of stuff. So, um, I think most importantly, actually, in all of this, it, like hardcore dirt, you know, we talk about clouds up here, and then dirt, actually getting stuff done. Um, the dirt aspect of today's show, the most important, I feel, is if you have an idea, and there's low barriers to entry, and you can get started without huge amounts of risk, huge amounts of money, huge amount of time and energy, just go do it. That's it for today. Mike Andy's here on the Business Bootcamp Podcast, episode 130.